And we are live. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to BWTN Sports. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to make sure you don't miss out on any interviews or exclusives. We have another big hitter in the room tonight. You could call it the night of the super middleweights. Today or tonight or this afternoon, we're talking to Eric Skogland, all the way from Sweden. Eric, how are we doing? I'm fine, I'm fine, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us and BWTM Sports. For people who don't know who Eric Skoglin yeah, is, my pleasure. thank you, Eric. Uh, we're talking, we're, we're, we've got this call coming all the way from Sweden. So, Eric, for just in a few words, tell us uh, what weight division you're in, your name, and your record. In the middle between uh, super middleweight and light heavyweight, uh, I fought my, my most of my career at light heavyweight. But uh, before my last fight, I moved down to super middle, uh, fighting in the world boxing super series. And uh, unfortunately, I, I lost a close fight to to Callum Smith. And uh, yeah, and now I got another chance in uh, in the super middleweight division, uh, having a fight with the Rocky Fielding coming up. Okay. So let's take it back a bit, because we know you're going to be against Rocky Fielding at the O2 Arena. That's fine, and we're looking forward to it. We can talk about previewing that fight afterwards, near the end. Let's talk about your career. First of all, Sweden. What got you into boxing? Uh, actually, it was my, my bigger brother. Uh, my older brother, he brought me to the gym. He wanted someone to, to spar and someone to beat up. And, uh, yeah. I followed him there, and I got stopped. You've not stopped since then. You got in the gym. So, when was your first amateur bout? Uh, in Sweden, we can't do amateur bouts uh, until we're 15. Uh, wow. I was 11 joining the boxing gym, and we have this kind of schoolboy fighting, you know, this uh, really soft boxing. You can't uh, hit hard. You get credits for your technical skills, and... Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, kind of a uh, non-contact boxing or light contact boxing. Uh, so I had about 60 fights uh, like that uh, before my first amateur bout. So it was and kind of was, uh, so it's like semi-contact or non no contact non-contact. Nah, light contact. You you can punch each other, but uh, no, if you go so hard. Uh, the referee steps in and, and calls the fight, and uh, yeah, you get a warning uh, for punching your opponent. Or you can actually, actually lose that fight by punch, knocking your opponent out. Uh, that's not allowed. So, so strange kind of boxing. It is. So, Eric, how how was it able? How were you able to, when you had your first amateur bout, actually be aggressive enough and uh, not be concerned about getting hit back, and actually being able to pull the trigger? Because all those years. Growing up, you were being so light and you couldn't hit hard. So suddenly, you go into your first amateur bout, have to spend all this time just basically not hitting somebody hard. How did you make the adjustments yeah, at 15? Watching my last performance, I guess I still struggle with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once I had the chance. Uh, so, you know, it, it, uh, it, it can definitely be a problem. Uh, uh, light contact boxing. Okay, so you have your first amateur bout. What was that experience like for you? I mean, you, you've you come from a situation where you've been spending years just pretending to sit, hit somebody or not really going for the motions without any aggression or any bad feeling, and now you yeah. have your first bout. My first amateur bout was, uh, uh, was actually a funny story because uh, I, I was working so hard for it, uh, doing a lot of sparring, and uh, not the slight contact sparring, I was sparring amateur boxers and uh, I was really looking forward to it because I was I was rather successful uh, in this light contact boxing. Uh, but then moving up in my first amateur bout and uh, I, I won it by walk over so I didn't get to fight. Uh, that was uh, that was sad. We were traveling pretty far and I'm waiting at home. Uh, week for the fight and uh, it was a walkover win for me. 
So when was your first real fight as an amateur? Uh, I think it was just a few weeks later in Denmark, actually. Ah. Uh, fighting a, a tournament. Okay. And what was that like for you? Yeah, I, I was looking forward to it. and It was great. I won the tournament. And uh, I, I was happy that I could, uh, I could fight for real. I was hit by a tournament. And, uh, I didn't win any of those first fights by knockout or technical knockout, but it was, it was a funny thing to, to be allowed to do it. And uh, I was, yeah, they were, they were counting their punches uh, at that time in amateur boxing. And uh, yeah, I thought that was better. I thought it was kind of weird when you were uh, getting uh, points for your technical skills. That was uh, a hard way to, to call the uh, judgment. Okay, so you go through, and then let, t talk me through briefly your amateur career. What did you, did you win any titles? Did you win any belts? Did you, did you fight any major prestigious titles? What happened with your career? Yeah, I was, I was a Swedish champion in, in all, uh, all the age categories, uh, as a cadet, as a junior, as a senior as well. Uh, even though I was turning professional, uh, yeah before I was 19. Wow. So, so I was pretty much just a union. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's, boxing is not a big sport in Sweden. Uh, so I, I remember I had to travel a lot uh, already back then. Uh, had a, over 260 traveling days with the boxing uh, in a year. Uh, and uh, I was trying to get a lot of fights and a lot of experience because when I started as an amateur, uh, I was successful in Sweden. Then we went to the Cadet European Championship, uh, me and my brother both, and we lost in the first round. Uh, we saw those Russian kids and those uh, these European boxers with many hundreds of amateur fights already then. Uh, and I, I, I myself had 15 fights at the moment, uh, and I thought I must do something uh, for my development. So I just fought everyone as soon as I got the chance. Uh, I fought every weekend uh, in Sweden and yeah, out of Sweden as well, traveling a lot uh, to get fights, to get experience. So I went, I think, 114 amateur fights in about three years wow. for coming pro. Wow. Um, so did that, where did that take you? I know you boxed, you said in Denmark. Did you ever come to the UK? Did you go to France, Italy, Spain? Yeah, I remember one fight in Scotland uh, against uh, Stephen Simmons. Ah. A local hero. We were fighting in a pub uh, at his backyard. And uh, yeah, that, that, that's a good experience for me. Because I remember my father, he was involved in Swedish boxing at the moment. So he was getting a phone call. Uh, and they were trying to find an opponent for Steven Simmons for a Christmas show. Uh, and I was walking by his office and I said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm looking for a heavyweight uh, contender for this Steven Simmons. And I, I was middleweight at the moment. I said, I want to fight. And he said, no, no, it, it's, it's dangerous. You, you can get hurt. Uh, I want to see how good it is. Uh, I want to see how, yeah, I want to test myself against him. So I got a fight and we were, we were traveling there, uh, traveling to Scotland for, I think, five days or something. Then I did a fight. So, uh, yeah, it was fun. Wow. Wow. How did the fight go with yourself and Simmons? Uh, I, I beat him with one point, I believe. Wow. So how much, so how much was Small, small ring in a pub, uh, massive crowd uh, in the, uh, yeah, crazy atmosphere. Uh, and, uh, yeah, uh, one of my funnest experiences so far. Steven Simmons, wow, that's uh, that's quite impressive performance. Because... Yeah, yeah, it was for me back then. Yeah, because... I was just a kid, though. So. And you were just, I know, of course, you're a kid back then, but how, how, how big was Simmons then compared to you? I mean, you know, Simmons was looking to fight uh, heavyweight. We were, we were fighting 91 uh, kilos. Uh, 
So not super heavyweight, as we call it in amateurs, but heavyweight. Uh, I guess you can say cruiserweight. Yes. Uh, I think I was normally 75 at the moment. Ah. Hello? I was running oh. around that small ring. And oh. Put me down and I threw as many punches as I could. <laughs> Just to keep them off you? Okay, so when was it that you thought you had enough experience to say, okay, I've got enough experience, I'm going to turn pro? It wasn't really that way. It was more like uh, I was aiming for the uh, Olympic Games in, in London, uh, 2012. Right. And that, that was my goal for many years. Uh, and everything I did was to, to get there. To, to gain enough experience to, to travel to the Olympics. But I couldn't agree with the Swedish national team in some points. And uh, uh, I remember we, we had the issues with training camps and preparations, and uh, yeah, we couldn't agree on some stuff. Uh, so I decided uh, national team wasn't for me. And I was fighting in the German Bundesliga uh, for uh, two seasons as an amateur. And then I was turning pro uh, for Team Salam at the age of 18. Wow. So how did you, how did the transition move from you being an amateur to being a professional with Salam? I mean, you weren't an Olympic champion. It wasn't a, a, a world champion, but yet you were this. No. So how? No, I, I, I remember I got, when I, when I decided that I, I, I will not be able to, to go to the Olympics, uh, I want to keep boxing. Uh, I, I better try myself as a professional. Uh, we had some contacts with uh, different promoters and I, I got the chance to to join the training camp uh, at Team Sauron in, in Gustav in Northern Germany. Uh, and I went there, me and my father did some sparring. Uh, and yeah, they come up with an offer, and I was uh, I was surprised. Uh, it was a good offer, and I, I have been able to to live on the boxing since that day. So yeah, I was very happy. So what what were the Salons like when you first met them? They're very professional, very organized. You know, uh, compared to the amateur boxing, where. You, you, you go all over and you get some fights and yeah, it, it can be a crazy world. Uh, getting to Germany was very organized and yeah, I remember I was impressed. Now, but they said also that at the moment they had three boxing gyms uh, all in Berlin and uh, yeah, I was in Sweden, I was happy living in Sweden. Uh, but they said you you have to, to join one of our gym and uh, you have to move here. So I was traveling to Bern uh, and I didn't know the language. I couldn't speak a word of German. Uh, so that was a, another tough experience. Wow. Wow. So when you actually, so you, you actually made the move to Germany, you had to move. You had no choice. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Uh, you know, I, I was getting a flat two minutes walk from a gym uh, and I was coming down there like in, in the beginning wasn't so, so much maybe eight weeks for a fight uh, but you had a lot of fights early in your career so I was basically there uh, not year round but yeah pretty much now during this time of course you're Swedish Badu Jack also is from Sweden as well did you ever bump into Badu Jack or did you, were you on along the same lines? How did you know about Badu Jack? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I fought him three times as an amateur. Wow. Okay. So I was stepping up as a cadet. I was 15, I think, the first time. And, and then I was uh, 16, uh, two times fighting him. And I fell short uh, every time. But it was pretty close fights. Uh, and I remember one of them was a split fight and for me it was massive just to to be in the same ring I mean he was in the national team for the, for the seniors and yeah he was 25 I was 16 so I mean it was it was pretty big for me already then wow 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 so do you stay stay in contact with Badu Jack as a fellow Swede or is it not like that Years to, 
because he, he, he left early in his uh, career uh, to America. I, right. haven't, I haven't met him since. Oh. But he, he was a nice guy. Uh, and I, I remember we did some sparring as well uh, during that period, uh, early in my career when I was like yeah, 15 to 17. Well, he is a he, he's a kind of like he's done well for Swedish boxing. He he uh, got knocked out. He was with Mayweather, got knocked out, brushed himself down, came back, became a world champion, um, uh, vacated, moved up to light heavyweight, won another world championship. Now might be fighting Adonis Stevenson. He's he's in terms of boxing for Sweden, he's done well for himself. Yeah. Inga Maya. Go ahead. Sorry? So, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'll, I'll come back to you, mate. Go ahead. No, no. Yeah, yeah. He, he, he's doing some great performance. Uh, unfortunately, he hasn't been able to fight in Sweden yet. I don't know why. Uh, I think uh, he, he likes it over in America. You <laughs> must be getting paid good money with Mayweather, right? Yeah, probably. Um, I've just thought about a boxer. Ingemar Johansson. Yes, I rem I don't know why his mind. He just flat. I got a flashback at Inga Ingemar Johansson. I don't know why. And I think I used to watch Inga. I, well, obviously I watched him via tapes. Obviously, he weren't a lot. Well, I was pretty young, if young. But Ingemar Johansson. Now, wasn't he a heavyweight? Yeah, he was a heavyweight. Who did Ingemar Johansson Small fight? Guy for nowadays, yeah. He was a heavyweight. Who did he fight? I can't remember who Ingemar Johansson fought. Sorry? Who did Johansson fight? Uh, he, he, uh, for Pedersen, I believe. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, had a, uh, a few big fights uh, in Sweden, a few big fights in America, too. Okay. 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 So, all right. So, back to you. You turn pro with the Sowlands. Uh, so, you're a pro fighter. What did they say to you was the goal in the first year for you? started uh, to go fight and, and, and get experience and also uh, at the gym uh, to, uh, you know, you start your career in four round fights, then you go ahead to six rounders and yeah, uh, step by step, they were, well, they were very patient. I was like very young and eager to prove myself and I said I can do how many rounds you like and I want to fight for a title and I want this and that, but they were more like, calm down young man had to get in line, we do it this way, we take one step at a time, and yeah, very organized. So then, who was your trainer when you actually turned pro? Uh, I was training with Carlton Rover uh, and his assistant, uh, Torsten Schmitz, uh, oh. so all the Eastern German uh, boxing coaches. Okay, um, did you have a choice in that matter, or was that forced upon you? Was that was 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 that something that was was that something that you had a choice in picking, or were you forced into that decision? No, I wasn't forced. I could have uh, I, I could have gone to any of the other gyms. They had a, one gym that was ruled by uh, uh, Otto yeah. uh and one gym uh, in the in the west of Berlin that was ruled by by uh, Uli Wegman. But uh, I think uh, yeah, I, I like the atmosphere in the. The Eastern Germany and the, and the, the, the Carsten Rover, uh, yeah, it was it was nice to me, and we we connected good in the uh, in the beginning. Uh, he was uh, the head coach of the training camp that I joined uh, when I yeah was sparring there for the first time, and they was trying me out. So yeah, we connected, and uh, yeah, it worked worked well with me. Okay, so what was your first major fight? Maybe fight. Yes. Wow. Uh, it has to be there for the WBC uh, youth light heavyweight title okay. uh, in Fredericksburg in Denmark against uh, Luke Blackledge. He was also undefeated at the moment, and uh, he came up from a victory against the former European champion Matt Larsen, uh, mm -hmm. another Dane, and. Uh, yeah, I think he was supposed to fight Rudy Markerson, but Rudy somehow pulled out, and 
yeah, I got the chance to, to fight him for this youth title. And when you when you on when you went to fight Luke Blackledge, were you considered the favourite or were you the underdog? I don't think any of us were at the world level, uh, but if you looked on Boxer, I remember he was the first opponent that was ahead of me. So I guess that could make me the underdog, but of course it was a Sauron show. I was a Sauron fighter, so I don't think the, the, the fans saw me as an underdog. Yes. Why are you on the subject of a Sauron fighter on a Sauron show? Does that mean... And I, I, I'm just throwing it out there because you are a Sauron fighter on a Sauron show. Then that not just for you; it could be a, a matchroom fight on a matchroom show. Do you feel more confident if a fight goes to points if you're against a fighter from a, a who is, who's not a, a, a Sauron fighter? Do you feel more secure if the fight goes to points that you'll win? If it's a close fight, yes, I think. Uh, but that work when you're not you're not at home and you're away um does that does that does that psychological yeah. effect yeah i guess you have to step on the gas a little bit uh, to convince them that uh, that you have the rounds uh, uh i'm used to, to control the rounds with my footwork and my left hand and and being told from from the german coaches since i was young that that's enough. Uh, don't do anything else. Don't keep taking the risks. Uh, so yeah, I guess that that can be if you if you travel abroad uh, for a fight. Let's let's now talk about so you, so what happens with your fight in Luke Blackledge? How does the fight go? Yeah, it wasn't one of the best performance. I remember I hit him good uh, in the first round. Uh, I think he put down the knee. Uh, he didn't get a count, and I was that that, that was uh, uh, bothering me because I thought he deserved a count, and I think I can finish this. I felt strong, and I felt yeah eager to prove myself, uh, but I couldn't finish it. And I parked myself out uh, for the first four rounds. I had to take a step back. I had to give a few rounds away uh, to just recover, and then I got back in the last three rounds, I guess, uh, and boxed okay i box decent and i got the decision but uh, yeah i wasn't happy with the performance after the fight okay so but it was a big learning fight uh i learned to control myself and yeah not to to step on the gas too early when you fight guys that you know you're gonna beat or you should be you just go out then you blow them away and then you fight a guy that gives brings resistance what sort of feeling is that for you, Eric? Yeah, you know, you put the pressure on yourself and you have the pressure from the fans and, and from your promoter and from everyone when you're fighting those guys at the lower level. Uh, so, so if you fight someone that everybody believes you should beat and, and they demand you to, to beat him, uh, I don't like that feeling. I think uh, it, it makes you do a little bit more stiff. Uh, I'm, I feel I'm, I'm more relaxed as an underdog. Okay, okay, okay. So you were nat. Would you say you're naturally a light heavyweight or naturally a super middleweight fighting as a light heavyweight? Where is it for you? Yeah, it depends. You know how many fights you have to do in a year, and uh, I think. Uh, as it has been for the last couple of years for me, two fights in a year. 
of them ever wake it's not a big problem. Uh, but fighting every second month or something like that, should live awake would mean a very boring life. Right. I understand. So you when you walk so when you fight in a light heavyweight, obviously the guys that are light heavyweight are boiling down from cruiserweight and some of them might be even boiling down from um, heavyweight. Um, the difference between super middleweight punching you and a light heavyweight punching you, is there that big a punch difference? And do you see the punches coming because you uh, fought a super middleweight? You know, I was, I was saying that uh, I, I would really have to I get to use my size in super middleweight stepping down and I was feeling big, I was feeling powerful and in the first and only fight I had in super middleweight I fought uh, probably the biggest man around, uh, Callum Smith, uh, who's mm -hmm. massive in super middleweight. Yeah. Uh, so, I, I don't know really, uh, for me it wasn't uh, big a difference, I, I fought a lot of light heavyweights uh, that doesn't punch as hard as talented and doesn't feel as powerful so i guess uh, the weight uh, is not everything and of course uh, the level uh, of Callum Smith compared to to my light heavyweight opponents is uh, pretty different too okay so you so what makes you make the decision why did you get selected or what was the why did you decide to fight in a super eight tournament no i had a shot with my promoter uh, and uh, we were trying to land a title fight at light heavyweight uh, for a long time. Uh, we were aiming for a European title, uh, and I was the mandatory for, I think, a year or something. Uh, but things always came up, and yeah, they, they messed around. Uh, we didn't get the fight. So uh, we were trying to, to get a world title fight with Nathan Cleverley, and we were really close. We were trying to get that uh, world title fight in Sweden, and that would have been yeah, the first world title fight in Sweden since forever. So uh, that was a, a, a massive fight we were aiming at, and I was hoping for it. But when I realized we were planning for it in March, and we were planning for it in April, and we were planning for it in May, and it got uh, moved out, and, and uh, yeah, uh, negotiations were, were struggling. And when I realized this won't come off, uh, I said I, I can go down to the middleweight to la land a, a type of fight uh, or a big fight because someone on themselves uh, had contacts with, with a few really good super middleweights like George Cruz, Tyron Sorge, and with Miguel Kessler uh, coming back to the ring. So uh, I was looking forward to, to get uh, a chance against any of them. And then this opportunity came with the tournament and they said, uh, yeah, you, you can join this. And yeah, I was really happy about it. It was more than I asked for. You mentioned that legendary name, Mikkel Kessler. Is he really still coming back? Have you seen him in training or anything like that? Yeah, yeah, I've sparred him a few times. What's he like now? Uh, What's he got left? Yeah, but, yeah he, he's good. Uh, you, you can see his experience. You know, he's a clever guy. He, he does a lot of thinking inside and outside the ring. And, uh, yeah, uh, he, he doesn't punish himself out. He, he waits for the moment to step in the gap. And I think he, he moves good. Uh, of course, a little bit rusty in the beginning, but uh, I, I think there's still something left in him. Uh, of course, not too many fights. Uh, he has a, had a long, hard career of injuries, and uh, uh, when he got sick uh, and time's running out, I think, yeah. Wow. No problem, but I think he will come back and fight once or twice. How do you think he would do against the top super middleweights in the world now? In 2018, Sorry? how do you think he's good enough to win a world title in 2018? Mr. Chesley? 
Yes. Yes. Wow, it's a tough question. Yeah, I think if he if he gets fit enough, uh, and of course he is good enough uh, for it, uh, you know. Uh, but he can also lose if he gets the chance because uh, the middleweight is a tough division. A uh, lot of good fighters uh, at the top, and I, I wouldn't say that there's any world champion that that I'm sure he will beat, but. Uh, uh, I'm not. I'm not sure that he will lose uh, either. So yeah, of course he he has the experience and he, he has the the possibility to to be a world champion once again. So talk to us about your experience with Callan Smith. Um, a lot of people in the UK didn't know what you were about. You were an unbeaten fighter. People didn't know who you were really uh, from the UK side of things. And uh, often when people don't know who you are in the UK, they go, Ah, oh, well, we know our fighter. The other guys are known. We don't know anything about him, so he's going to win. So it, it's hands down that Callum Smith will win. The fight didn't go according to what people thought would happen. And in fact, you put on a very good fight against Callum Smith. Talk to us about your account of when you fought Callum Smith. Yeah, you know, I was uh, hearing some about him that I had the odds before the fight, and there were like crazy odds uh, uh, saying that. Uh, Callum Smith was gonna knock me out in the first round. And if, if I would beat him, it was like how many times the money. So uh, yeah, it was a good opportunity for people to bet. Unfortunately, I didn't win. Uh, I think it was a close fight. Of course, I scored it differently, but uh, you know uh, that's boxing. And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna cry over that fight anymore. I, I, Looking forward to get back in the ring and uh, yeah, hopefully get a win September 17th. But uh, of course, it, it, it was uh, it was hard to, to accept not only a loss but a loss in the tournament. That means that you can't fight uh, in the semi-finals. Uh, that would have been amazing. Um, in terms of Callum Smith's punching power to the body and to the head, particularly his body punches, what are they like? body punches uh, before my fight uh, when I was studying him and uh, they, they, they looked brutal you know uh, I think he, he had problems to, to land them on me because I didn't get to take uh, that many shots to the body uh, but uh, I run into a sneaky right hand to the head uh, counter punch and yeah that connected uh, and I was yeah I was hurt and I remember the the referee saying in the dressing room that we have no standing count here, so if you are hurt, put down a knee, or I will stop the fight. Uh, and I didn't want that to happen, so I stepped back to the ropes. And when he was coming at me, I thought I'm losing control, so I better take a knee than than losing the fight. A uh, TKO. Ah, interesting. So. What's he like when you, when you, when there were moments in the fight where you pressed the action and when you had Callum Smith's back against the ropes, he looked very uncomfortable. Why did you not press the action more at that point in time? Yeah, because I'm stupid, I guess. <laughs> no. So, uh, I, 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 I was forced for many years to fight behind my left and to, to, to stop taking the risks uh, and, and safety first and all that. Uh, so... I guess this, this eager to knock someone out uh, hasn't really been there, uh, and it, it should have been there in this fight because if it was, I, I really I had my chance in the fifth round. I guess uh, when I hit him really good with the left hand and connected nearly every time, and I was like running after him, happy to connect with my left hand again and again and again, and I just I didn't put my combination together. And I didn't take the chance. So, yeah, that was my mistake. So how how hurt did you have Callan Smith in that situation, do you think? How hurt he was? Yeah, in your opinion. I don't know if he ever was, you know, like shaky or like his legs were wobbling or something like that. But he was bothered and he was really uncomfortable. And I think he was stressed as well because... At that moment, uh, I think everybody felt that 
I was taking control over the fight and I was taking over. Uh, but then he came back strong and yeah, with knockout in the 11th round, I think uh, he felt victorious. But it was a close fight. Okay, um, so what's the, what are the other lessons that you've learned from that fight? Yeah, you know, I, I, of course I learned that uh, I had to step on the gas when I hurt someone. Uh, of course, you should have known that even before that fight, so that's kind of an embarrassing lesson. But uh, yeah, I learned now, and if I get the chance to send the 17th, uh, I will take it. Uh, but you know, you never know. Boxing is boxing, and I, I've started to rock the feeling a lot. Uh, and I saw his performance against Callum Smith. He was knocked out in the first round, but you can't really put too much value into that because that can happen to anyone. It was one punch, and he was he was gone. And then he was following it up as he always does. Callum Smith, and he was able to stop him. So yeah, you, you can't really judge of feeling after that you have to look at these other performances do you think that Callum Smith is good enough to win the Ali trophy yeah I think he is but I'm not sure that he will do it uh, there are a lot of good fighters of course uh, I'm hoping for Callum Smith to win it uh, I really do uh, and uh, I, I hope that I will somehow in the future uh, put myself in a position for a rematch but, uh, as you, you know, boxing is boxing, you never know. But uh, I think that there, there's a, uh, yeah, he should be uh, big and strong enough to, uh, to beat Bremer in the semifinals, even though Bremer looked good against Brandt. He looked uh, very good. looked in many, many years. Uh, I thought after Bremer's fight with uh, Cleverly, with Cleverly uh, that this was just a cash grab, I thought, he, because... I know him from training since before, and I met him in Monaco uh, in the photo shoot, and he looked, yeah, he looks finished. Uh, so I thought this, this is just a cash grab. But he looked uh, really like he meant it, and he was well prepared. And if he puts on that kind of performance against Callum, he can be in trouble. Uh, but I, I would still say that Callum should be too big and too powerful, and if the fight goes uh, the distance or close to the distance uh, and it started to hurt, I think uh, you will see that Bremer, he doesn't want it uh, that much as, as Callum does. Okay. Do you think it was because Rob Brandt was a small middleweight? Is that is that why um, Bremer looked so good? Or was it that Bremer was just that good? Bremer The, the rhythm in the fight, but I think he, he's an awkward guy, you know, he, he's hard to hit and he, he's moving a lot, uh, good footwork, uh, he can move back and forward and, and, and sideways too, and he, he's a sneaky, sneaky fighter, uh, sneaky body shots and yeah, sneaky left hand, so you have to be careful uh, fighting Bremer, he's, he's not a massive puncher, but uh, yeah, he's a sneaky one, and you have to watch out for that left hand. Okay. So, back to you now. Uh, I know you, you made a comment that was picked up by uh, a few media outlets regarding um, Callan Smith asking for it to be on neutral ground. What are your thoughts on that? And can you, can you yeah, kind of... Can uh, you... I, think, I, I think it was Jim Gallagher who asked for it uh, in that tweet. Uh, and I think it was Jim Gallagher who asked for it. ground. Uh, why would it be? It should be where where it felt the most. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think it could be Liverpool or it could be Schwerin. Uh, and uh, yeah, yeah, this is a tournament, and it's not up to you. So you have to be happy to, to travel. Uh, if, uh, that's what they say. Why would they want it on? Why do you think they'd want it on neutral ground anyway? I mean, why can't well, they just be like? If Fights in Germany with the German crowd and judges, and it's a close fight that goes the distance. It could be, yeah, it could be problems. 
And if it's in the UK and it's in Liverpool? Yeah, then it's the opposite. Uh, then, then you could uh, get use from, from, the, from the crowd and uh, yeah, from the judges. But I think, uh, I, I think the, 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 the Bremer Brown fight in Schwerin sold more tickets than uh, Smith's last fight in Liverpool. And I think maybe that's why they start to feel this fight might be put in Germany. And with all the other British fighters, uh, we, we have uh, Bruce uh, Eubank that will be in Britain. Uh, so maybe they want to put the semi final in Germany. And uh, yeah, maybe Joe Gallagher is worried about it. Maybe Carl Smith is worried about it as well, but I haven't read anything uh, when he says he's not happy to travel. So yeah, maybe he's. Okay, now you're in a situation because you're going to have to come to the UK to face Rocky Fielding. Are you concerned in terms of Rocky fighting Rocky Fielding, knowing that he got more or less a gift decision against Rabras? Yeah, you know, I'm happy to travel, and I, I've never done this challenge, and I, I wouldn't do it this time either. Uh, this is a good chance to to get back uh, fighting for the world title uh, as soon as possible. And I think after my my loss to Callum, this is the fastest possible way um, to get a world title fight again. Uh, so I was really glad when this uh, fight was offered to me. And uh, yeah, of course, traveling to uh, UK again, risking a close fight goes to the decision but yeah it, it, it shouldn't matter uh, and uh, I, I learned that from, from my last fight that when I get the chance I will step on the gas and if it's not enough to, to get a stoppage it, it should be enough to to convince the judges that it's my round uh, and hopefully I can win some points or uh, did you fight? Did you see Rocky Fielding's fight against John John, John Ryder? Yeah, I, I, I can't put too much uh, value in that either because uh, John Ryder is very different style uh, as uh, compared to me, uh, so I can't really use the mistakes that I can see Rocky Fielding doing against Ryder. Uh, because I, I can never do the same. I can never be a short stop uh, So I, 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 I'm not focusing too much on that fight. Do you feel, in terms of Rocky Fielding, because of the way he got stopped by Callum Smith, that he's going to try and prove a point, but when he fights you, to kind of get rid of you in a dominant fashion, whereas Callum Smith struggled? Do you yeah. think? Of course he will try it. Uh, I mean, I, I think we're pretty much in the same situation. I think both of us uh, would love a rematch with Callum Smith. Uh, and uh, it's not impossible to get, but we have to get past each other. And that's an interesting matchup. Okay, what are your thoughts on, uh, in terms of you now, when do you, when were you coming to the UK? Were you leaving to the last moment? Were you come a week beforehand? We do two weeks of training in the UK. How is it going to work for you and your team? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, we're, we're planning uh, the, the last weeks of the camp uh, as we move on, move on but, but uh, probably just uh, for the, the media week, the, the fight week. Okay. And I will be there. So, of course, I will train something, but uh, I will probably uh, finish my sparring uh, home in New Shopping. But we're not entirely sure yet. Uh, things can happen and uh, maybe if I get a good uh, possibility to to work in, in the UK, maybe I'll we'll go a few weeks earlier. In terms of sparring, who have you brought in for sparring? Uh, yeah, we're having a guy from, from uh, Spain coming up. Uh, he's coming tonight. Uh, we're sparring tomorrow. Uh, yeah, for a week and then I will see we take one week at a time uh, and, uh, and change the spine partners uh, so 
I, I'm not really sure uh, who would come uh, for the last two weeks yet. And uh, what are you doing differently in terms of training? I know you've talked about me uh, you've made a mental memory message or to yourself that you have to be you know you've got to step on the gas more. Have you has that translated into your training now, Eric? Yes, a little bit. Uh, I try to uh, of course throw uh, some more punches, uh, put the combinations together, but it's not. It's not really a training issue. Uh, it's in my head and the problems in my head and the solutions in my head too. Uh, I don't think uh, it, it wasn't a question about fitness or uh, yeah, uh, ability to, to do it. It was just, uh, it wasn't done sad enough. Okay, okay. Um, when you went back with your trainer, um, in terms of strategy moving forward, you often hear fighters say, we're going back to the drawing board. What does the drawing board look for? What did the drawing board look like for Eric Skoglin? Yeah, we, of course, we were, we were ha pretty happy with the performance in my last fight. I think I put in a good performance. Uh, I think I could have won that fight. Uh, it was a close one. But it it wasn't really too much uh, to change uh, back at the drawing board. It was more of a tactical mistake uh, that we didn't put in, uh, enough punches together. We didn't step on the gas in the fifth round and try to end the fight. Uh, that should have been done. Okay, fair enough. So, fighting the O2 arena, would that be the biggest arena you've boxed at? Or is it bigger where you boxed when you fought Callum Smith? Uh, I, I'm not sure how many things are sold, but I think the Oto is, uh, is, is bigger uh, than, than the Echo. Uh, it should be bigger. Uh, I fought in Copenhagen in part and once with the Kessler show. Uh, that was also uh, a big big one uh, with a massive crowd. But uh, of course, they, they weren't there for me. And uh, in, in Liverpool, uh, we were the main event. Me and Callum, so uh, of course the, the crowd were uh, yeah very loud during our fight. And I think uh, I haven't seen a fight with uh, yet, but I think we will. Me and Rocky Fielding will be yeah not the first fight, uh, maybe the second last or or third from from there. So it should be a massive crowd in there, uh, and not too many Swedes backing me, I guess. <laughs> You'd be surprised. There's quite a few British people on our Twitter on on our Twitter page. Uh, people have been saying we're backing uh, Eric Scoglin. So you've got a lot of supporters. I think one thing about UK fans, if they know you can fight, or they see you try hard, yeah. and you're entertaining. Thank you. I will. I will, I will need all the support I can get. Uh, so I think uh, gaining a few uh, UK fans is. is really good for me uh, but i don't think they will be enough to to match the fielding fan uh, <laughs> in the Oto arena. But we'll, we'll see um what's what's the sourlands what have they said to you about this fight how have they have they said well you know this is it for you eric you've got to you know you've got to win this fight or is it more a case of let's wait and see what's been the the feeling with them no the, the feeling is like this is the fastest way to get back uh, fighting for world titles. That that's our goal. Uh, and normally, uh, losing a fight at, at this level, uh, as I did against Callum, maybe you get a European title fight or uh, something easier than that, and then step up in a European title fight. And now I got the chance to fight for the WBC silver belt uh, directly uh, after this loss and. I think that's that, that that's a, uh, a chance that you have to grab, and uh, yeah, I'm happy with the fight. I couldn't ask for another fight. Uh, one of our listeners, Mark Plattenbridge, he's he's said it's hard not to like Eric Scogland. I personally think he will stop fielding. So a lot of people act. There are people actually think you're going to stop fielding. So yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 
I, I probably won't stop them with my left hand, so I would need to put some punches together. But if I if I can do that, uh, yeah, uh, maybe I have a chance. Wow. Um, before I let you go, just want to hear your thoughts on the other semi-final, Eubank v Groves. What do you think? How do you think that fight yeah. goes? That's that's a trick. Well, I know Groves. Uh, we we did some sparring together uh, in the past as well, and uh, I remember the first time I saw him, I thought he was brilliant. You know, it was fast hand, good head movement, good footwork. Everything was was perfect and watching his first fight with Carl Forge when he dropped him in the first round and he was following it up and I thought he was going to win this fight and then it was called off and I didn't understand what was happening. But then something happened in the second fight with Carl Forge and I think Forge broke something inside uh, of the old ghost that he has been struggling with since then because he hasn't been the same guy. Uh, since that fight. And I think that the, the old George groups uh, that I know uh, could be enough to, to, to beat uh, Eubank without question. But the performance I've seen from Gross uh, the last couple of years he could mean he's in trouble against Chris Eubank. So it will be it will be a fun fight and it will be a close fight and I'm really looking forward to watching. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping for George. Uh, I know him a little bit and I like him. Uh, but I think he has to really forget what, what happened once with Carl Fox and yeah, move forward and relax because he deserves to relax. He's so much faster when he relaxes and he boxes so much better. Uh, when he gets tensed, you can see it, and it, it's the same for all fighters. You have to relax uh, and to make your your style work. Um, Mark Plattenbridge continues. He says, "I'm a huge Callum Smith fan, and was worried he's eaten the jab too much. Eric should believe in himself more." Yeah, yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and uh, yeah. It could be so sad that I, I didn't have enough confidence to, to put on the gas and to, to stop that fight, but uh, I have now. So if I got the chance to do it again, uh, it would probably look different. Um, we've got a, somebody by the name of SP says, I bloody hope Eubank beats uh, George Groves. He then says, Bremer will spank Callum. And then he goes on and says, Fielding is poor. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't really know what to say about that. <laughs> well, you're not going to say... What, what, what do you think Rocky Fielding does well, um, Eric? Yeah, he, he's an aggressive starter. You know, he put the punches together. Uh, mm -hmm. He seems to have punching power. Uh, and, uh, you know, he can, he can spread the punches. He throws uppercuts and hooks and, and straight hands. Uh, good combinations. Uh, that's his, his strongest, uh, strongest thing. Uh, Mark Platinum Bridge says, "Good luck, Eric. Keep up the good work, Ingram. Thank you, sir." Um, yeah, there's one other fight. Actually, our next guest, uh, super middleweight challenger, he's going to be challenging for the IBF super middleweight championship of the world against James DeGale. He's known as Caleb or Caleb Turex. Do you know of him? Yeah, 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 I've heard of him. Uh, watched a few, few fights with him. Uh, yeah, he's a decent fighter, but uh, should not be enough uh, for James De Gale. But depends on what James De Gale is coming back from the injury. Of course, he should be a little, a little bit rusty. Uh, maybe not. Uh, maybe he can't uh, put his best performance in, and then. A chance for, for Caleb, but uh, I, I favor uh, the game to win uh, pretty easy. Okay, and I'm going to mention two more fights for you just to throw it out there, just to hear your opinion. Deontay Wilder versus Anthony Joshua. Who wins? Oh, whoever connects. <laughs> heavy guys and heavy 
hand. Uh, but I, I, I like Joshua to, to, to beat Weiler. Uh, I'm a huge uh, Anton Joshua fan. And uh, yeah, I enjoyed his, his fight against Klitschko. It was massive. And uh, I, I like the guy as well. He seems very humble. And uh, yeah, I, I like the, the atmosphere between the fighters uh, building up the, the Joshua Klitschko fight. It was not a lot of trash talk. It was two gentlemen. Uh, two great fighters who stepped up in the ring, both put in a massive performance, and AG came out victorious, so hats off for him. Okay, and one more fight is coming up. Oh, two fights actually. Hey, Bellew 2 on your card. Who wins? Yeah, on my card. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, I, I'm on their card. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's, that's, that's a hard one to call. Uh, I was calling Hay before the, the, the first fight, and uh, yeah, he, he didn't do enough. Uh, so yeah, maybe I called Belly this time, and I maybe I have to suck it up once again. <laughs> uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not too good speculating in, in, in other fights, uh, but I think. If, if he shows up fit for a fight, uh, it should be a problem uh, for Bellew, who's both guys are actually former cruiserweight, so they're rather small and heavyweight. Uh, but I think he is the more powerful, uh, more explosive one of them. But yeah, uh, I'm, I'm not sure. One final fight. I, 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 want, to, I want to say he again. But, uh, yeah, um, I'm not too convinced. Rigan Dow versus Lomachenko, December 9th. Who wins? Oh, but that's, that's a good fight. Uh, I, I, I'm a Lomachenko fan. Uh, I think he's... I, I mean, I hope he's unbeatable. Uh, of course, he lost once, but, yeah, that, that doesn't really count. Uh, <laughs> Said like a real uh, fan. Yeah, yeah, but fights in a world title fight in your second pro fight. I mean, he's the guy's a machine. Uh, and uh, Regan Jones, yeah, he's a brilliant fighter as well. I remember I watched the tape over and over again for the Olympics 2004. Uh, and he, he was there, uh, yeah, doing a, a name to remember uh, already back then. So this is it's really two good fighters and I think yeah, that, that could easily be the fight of the year. Uh, SP says that's a good fight but Rigondeaux has been set up to fail. Yeah. Possibly. Okay. Eric Scoglin, do you have anything else to say to the, 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 the fans listening in and do you have a message for Rocky Fielding if he's listening? Great stuff. Eric, how do people follow you on Twitter? Uh, yeah, my, my Twitter account is Scoglin, underline Eric. Uh, yeah, and my Instagram is Scoglin Eric. And I'm on Facebook too, so yeah, be, feel free to follow me. Uh, follow my camp and my preparations for what I feel. I have to say, Eric is an excellent, excellent um I, I reached out to him on Twitter and I sent him an email. And when did I email you? Was it email? Was it? Uh, I think two days ago. Yeah, Friday. Friday, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. I emailed you Friday and we're doing the interview on Sunday. So, top man, top bloke, Eric. Thank you so much. And we wish you all the best um, on December the 17th. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care, champ. Bye bye. There you have it, Eric Scotland. 
speaks to BWTM Sports, gives his thoughts on Rocky Fielding, the super middleweight division, his future plans, his amateur career. What more do you want? Coming up next at 9.30 p.m., we have Caleb or Caleb Trex. He'll be talking about his career and obviously the fight against James DeGale. See you soon.